Hey everyone, today we're learning about this really cool wavy effect that you can apply onto your text and bring into InDesign. You can use it as a title page or anything that you want. We're going to start off in Illustrator first and then we're going to hop into InDesign and I'll put a description on the top right just so you guys know which program we're in. All right, so we're starting off in Illustrator and feel free to pause the screen if you guys need to capture what I'm creating here. Now, after we created this, the first thing I'm going to do is just put both of these artboards together and this will help us visualize what it's going to look like when we transfer this to InDesign. The first thing we're going to do is just create a line. So this is the line segment tool, and I'm gonna create that just across the page here. If I hold shift, it's gonna create a nice straight line for me. Okay, so after we have that, we're gonna select the line, go into effect, go into distort and transform, and we're gonna hit transform. Now to bring up this transform effects tab, and all we're going to do is change this to 50, or whatever you like, I like to use 50, hit preview. And then all we're going to do is just move the slider until we have one that we think is a good pattern to use. Now, I'm gonna use something like this. And what we're gonna do is change the thickness on the line. So here I have just 0.1 inch and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now that you see, if I change this up here, whatever your units are, it's going to change it for every single one of these. Now. It's important to know that for this particular method that we're doing, we don't want too much gap in between the black and the white. So I would say the black spaces should be a lot thicker than what you have for the white. So the white space, try to have it not as much. So here I'm gonna actually gonna go with something like 1.75. So after we have that, we're gonna select our line here, go to object, and then we're going to go to envelope distort, and we're gonna make this with a mesh. So for this particular transformation, all we're trying to get is waves on our pattern. So we don't really need any rows, we just need columns. So here you can see I have six because I'm gonna be dragging three of them up and three of them will remain. So I'm gonna use one and six right here and I'm gonna click okay. So you can see that if I try to transform this right now, it won't work. What we actually have to do is do the direct selection tool. And what we're going to do is just pick three from the middle that we're going to transform. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag my mouse, select everything on this column, and just drag that up. So let's say we wanna do something right here, and then do the same thing in the middle one. And I like to just line it up. It'll help you out when that purple line goes in. And then one more over here, doing the same thing. So that's great, we already have a pretty cool pattern that we can use to overlay onto something else. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is just rotate it. So I'm holding shift so that it's right at 45 degrees, which is what we want. So now that we have this really cool pattern, what we're going to do is overlay text on top of it. And we're doing that through the type tool. So with the type tool selected, I'm just gonna click somewhere on my page and then I'm going to type in what I want. So for example, uh, we know that for this one, we're just trying to use something for a title page. So this is section nine, so I'm gonna write zero nine. Uh, and then we're going to make this just a little bit bigger. So for this particular font, the trick is to find something that is very bold because we eventually we want to put a picture in here. You really want something that is bold and that will take up a lot of the page. So for this one, I'm gonna be using Bauhaus 93. Okay, so now that we have both of those guys, I'm gonna just make that a little bit bigger. We're gonna go into type and then we're going to create outline. Now it'll create outlines for both of these guys. We're gonna right click, ungroup so that we can manipulate one at a time. I'm gonna select both of these guys, drag them on top of the pattern, and we just want to kind of capture a lot of the pattern here. So once we have something that we're familiar and we're happy with, go ahead and just leave that right there. I'm gonna move the nine onto the other page, and I'm just gonna drag another pattern over. And to do that, I'm holding Alt, and I'm just dragging it over the nine. Okay, so now that we have both of these guys, we're going to select both of them and then we're going to right click and then make clipping mask. Now you have to make sure that the outline of the number is actually on the front here. So if you run into error, try clicking on the number, right click, arrange, and then bring to front. After that, you select everything, right click, and then make clipping mask and it'll do this for us. Okay, now if we just bring these two into InDesign, it's not going to actually work. InDesign's gonna be very confused because there's so many effects going on. So what we need to do is actually click on this, go to objects, go to expand, and then we're gonna expand the object and the fill. Now, because it has a mask on the outside, we need to do this one more time. Object, 
expand one more time. And then it's going to have this shape. The next part is also very important. We're gonna go into window, make sure that our pathfinder is on. Oh, I just switched it off, but make sure it's on. And we're gonna use this one, which is divide. What that'll do is make each and sing every single one of these black areas a editable path that we can drag an image to in InDesign. So that's exactly what we want. And we're gonna do the exact same thing to the nine over here. Now that we have both of these guys, I'm gonna go and drag both of them onto the same page again. And I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to group these guys and I'm going to go into effect, 3D and material. We're gonna scroll down to 3D classic and we're gonna do rotate. So here I just wanted to give it a nice effect as if it's kind of lying down on the ground. So just dragging this until you find one that really fits what you're trying to do. And if you guys actually check on the perspective, what it'll do is you can see here, it's going to skew a part of it to adjust to the camera angle, which is what we want. So I'm gonna be turning that on just a little bit. Okay, so now that we have something that looks pretty good, you can go ahead and go to object and then expand appearance. That'll allow everything to come in and have its own thing. We're gonna do this one more time and we're going to do the divide once more. You can see that I have my shapes back and it's ungrouped. Now, before we actually move this into InDesign, I'm going to ungroup this and just make sure that I have these in different layers. I'm gonna delete what I don't need and I'm going to just make sure that I have everything selected uh, and grouped. So I'm gonna use the lasso tool and just select what I need, make sure I leave anything out. Oops, accidentally selected one more than I need, so I'm gonna uncheck this guy. Okay, and then I'm gonna group the zero, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the nine, group, so I'm control group, and that's it. We are ready to move this into InDesign. So what we're going to do is select both of these guys, and we're going to just copy. So right click and copy. Hey everyone, if you guys still need your Adobe programs and you're still looking to get it, I have affiliate link down in the description, so if you're a student, you can get up to 85% off, which is an insane deal right now. Uh, and if you click that affiliate link, it'll really help out the channel and you'll get your Adobe. So win-win situation for both of us. I would really appreciate it. And with that, let's get back straight into the video. All right, so now we're in InDesign. Feel free to pause and look at these options if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and just create that. Okay, so we do have our copy that is still pending from our Illustrator file. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click and paste in place. So it'll come in as a group and that's not particularly what we want for our layout. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, ungroup. And now each one of these wave is going to be selectable and editable. But I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So what we want to do is basically create a compound path out of both of these. But before that, we want to make sure that we wanna get the position correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and just group both of these so we can move them around. So group the zero as well. And I'm going to move this around and use the W button to preview until I find a position that I really like and a size that I really like with these guys. So then for us to actually give it a picture on the inside, we have to ungroup this and ungroup this and we have to select everything at once, go into object, path, make compound path. Now, all we have to do is drag our image into the lines that are here, and you can see that it's already come in very nicely. What we have to do is click on the image, right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally, and you can see that my lemon is going to come in very nicely. Okay, so if we want to actually move the image on the inside, maybe it's too big, maybe it's too small, maybe I want the lemon to show up just a tiny bit more on the left, we can double click on the colored part and just use the left and right arrows to move the image left and right. So if I want this guy to go left just a little bit more, I can do that. Also, if I want this image to be a little bit bigger, I can change it from the different uh, transform box options, but I'm going to play around with this until I'm happy with the result here. All right, I think something like this looks really good. And I do notice that there is a little bit of a black outline on my image. I can see that I do have a fill here, which I don't want. So I'm gonna switch this guy off 
and you can see that's gonna open this up a little bit more and make it just a tiny bit lighter. Next, all we have to do is populate it with your favorite titles and your headings and subheadings. So this is what I ended up with. All the information is on the screen right now. But I would also encourage you guys to just experiment with things like effects. You can add things like drop shadows to make this look like a completely different thing. If you just see, I give it some very simple effects. They look completely, completely different in the effects panel. So give that a shot and that's it. What a great title page to plug into your magazine so that people know which section they're looking at. If you guys did enjoy this video, please share, like, and subscribe. Tell me what you learned that was new or is interesting and also leave your questions down below. I don't think people use this enough, but it's a great resource for people like me or people from the community to help you out if you have questions. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.